Hi. Um, so my name's Tom Close. I am the founder of Magmo, and we are a state channel research and development company. Um, and today, as the title suggests, I'm going to be talking about building a state channel application. So, in fact, an alternative title of this talk could actually be this. We built a state app channel application, and we found it really hard. Um, it turns out that this is a pretty accurate description of the situation. Um, so this talk is going to be partly show and tell. Um, it's going to be partly like group therapy and partly a call for help. Um, so before I go into that, let me tell you a little bit more about who we are. Um, because maybe some of this is a little bit relevant to why we found it hard, but maybe some of it isn't. And I'll talk about that later too. Um, so we are a team of six um, researchers and developers. So we're all pretty experienced. Um, I guess we've got like three or four people who've got like more, more than five, five years experience developing or in security. Um, half our team have PhDs, um, but we're all new to the blockchain. So it was this time last year that I started working in the blockchain. Everyone else is more recent to the blockchain than I am, and more recent to Ethereum, obviously. Um, so let me now talk a little bit. This is the show and tell part. Um, so today we have launched this application um, where you can play rock, paper, scissors in a state channel. Um, I can see by the like dumbstruck silence that everyone is like utterly amazed by that. And to be honest, um, rock, paper, scissors is not the most exciting game. Um, let me just quickly take you through it, how it works. Um, not going to do a live demo, but I do have a little um, video. Um, so here, somebody is logging into the app. They're putting in their name. And they're going to create a challenge um, for someone else to join. So they're going to say, we're going to play rock, paper, scissors, and we're going to play for this much each round. They put that challenge up. On the next, left side, we've got player two, George, who's about to log in. Um, and he's going to accept the first player's challenge. Um, first player confirms. And then we get into this state where your channel wallet comes out. And your channel wallet is something that any state channel application will need. If you're exchanging states with someone, those states are as almost as important as um, as real money. So, like, if you lose your states, you can lose everything. So, you need this wallet thing. Um, any state channel network will need some sort of channel wallet to manage the states that are being sent across. So, here you can see they are depositing into an on-chain contract. So, they're both locking some funds up on-chain, and those are the funds that we're going to play for in this game. So in a moment, both those transactions will have gone through, and they can return to the game. So you can see we've got this state of the game here. They've each got um, five, five each, as it were. And now they're going to play rock, paper, scissors. So behind the scenes here, um, this app is implementing a state channel protocol. So it is signing states and exchanging those states between the users. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that how we're actually thinking about those applications. Um, so this is built on top of a framework called Forcemove. I'll talk a little bit more about how this actually works with Forcemove later. Um, we're just going to go through to the end of the game. I think George is on a winning streak. Um, so it's not going to take much longer. Hopefully. Yeah, he's getting there. Um, so yeah, at the end of the game, one of the things about this sort of state channel application is we're playing one game of rock, paper, scissors. We needed one on-chain deposit at the beginning. And what we'll see in a minute is another on-chain deposit at the end. Um, this is something that when we have like virtual channels in state channel networks, you'll be able to get away with like one deposit at the beginning of the month. And then you'll be able to play multiple games like this, opening these channels and closing them off-chain. So that's like an important area of future research, which we'll probably be looking at at some point in the future. Um, anyway, so this is the demo. This is the um, example app that we've put together. Um, so you're excited at the beginning. You're probably even more overwhelmed now. You've seen it in action. Um, I'm seeing a lot of stunned faces. Clearly a winner. Um, so what was hard about this? 
Um, so I guess part of the problems were the standard blockchain problems that everyone experiences when they're new to the blockchain and when they're trying to develop on the blockchain. And I'm not going to really talk about that aspect of things so much because that's common to like all the projects. Um, so the problems about setting up your app to work with TypeScript and integrate with Truffle or like whichever other developer framework you're using, I'm not going to really touch on that. I'm not going to really touch on like the problems with MetaMask when you're developing and having to flick the network back and forwards and taking a while to realize that stuff and like. I'm not gonna, definitely not going to talk about the eight weeks we spent debugging Solidity by emitting events before we realized there was a Solidity debugger. So a lot of that is just like part and parcel of developing on Ethereum. Um, we're interested in learning from other people in the room how to better do that. We've like learned a lot of this stuff by trial and error, but like there are probably still a load of stuff we don't know. Um, so one of the things I wanted to spend the last few minutes of this talk talking about is what are the essential things, the things essential to state channels that we found difficult. Um, and I guess the way I would look at this, I'm going to focus on this one problem. Um, a hard thing about state channels is state and managing state. So what do I mean by that? So we were working, we we're building this app on top of the force move framework. And the force move framework has a very simple way of managing state and thinking about the state of your state channel and your state transitions. So this is a representation of rock, paper, scissors in the force move framework. You have four different states. If you're trying to program this as a developer building on top of the framework, you're responsible for writing a single library contract with a valid transition function which defines these states and the valid transitions between them. So on the face of that, that seems pretty simple and it's pretty conceptually simple to think about what's happening actually in the state channel and what's happening on the chain. And that's one of the nice things about what we're working with. It's like one of the simpler state channels frameworks to work with. Um, but in terms of your app, there are like many, many more states. So when we actually came to like interacting with those four states, four, four types of messages that we're sending back and forth, we ended up with this diagram. And this doesn't even include the wallet stuff that we showed. All of those wallet states have been collapsed into like states at the top. Um, so I guess why is this this complicated? And I guess if you think about it like, Back in the very early days of the web, you had like a user who was interacting with a server. And that was like pretty simple. Like the state was the state that was stored on the server. There's one way of interacting with it. You put it back on the server. There's one source of truth. Now, in recent years, things have got a bit more complicated. So you now have front end JavaScript apps. So you've got like the state, your local state, and then you've got the updated state on the server, and you're interacting with your local state, and maybe somebody else is interacting with the server, and you like can receive updates. And then the blockchain adds an extra dimension into that. So the blockchain is like another player in that. Maybe you've replaced your server with the blockchain. Maybe you've got a server and you've got a blockchain. Um, but you've now got multiple places that these updates can come from. And state channels adds yet another place where those updates can come from. And in a state channel, your whole logic is around, I'm receiving these states from my counterparty, um, and therefore I can like reason about what's happening on chain. And that just gets very complicated to think about and stuff. So like, we're now thinking about this, thinking about how we can make it simpler, thinking about how we can take this thing which seems in some way inherently complex and work with it better, thinking of better ways to manage this complexity in the applications. So final plug, so this, the code you saw today, the demonstration, it is currently live on Ropston. So you can visit it at magmo.com slash RPS. Um, in case you don't find any friends there, we have some bots that you can play against. Um, they get progressively harder. Um, the final bot is the psychic bot. And if you can beat the psychic bot, we want to hear from you. Um, you'll get like, all, we'll give you a Twitter shout out, Prizes, prizes are limited, but you'll get like small fleeting honor in terms of a Magmo Twitter shout out. 
Um, so I think I'm out of time. So thanks for listening. You can follow us at MagmoHQ on Twitter.